While today many are still unfortunately failing to find RTX 3000 series graphics cards for sale, we thought it was the perfect time to take a look at the history and evolution of the graphics card. This trusty piece of hardware has been there for gamers for decades, but how have they changed since their initial inception, and what was life like before them? A graphical processing unit, or GPU, has been the defining factor of video game performance and graphical fidelity for years and years. But this wasn't always the case. In fact, the idea of a GPU as such didn't even exist until the 1990s. And back then, the PC hardware market was very different. The upstart NVIDIA didn't even launch their first GeForce card until 1999. Suffice it to say, the graphics cards in home computers have changed a lot and are going to continue to change much more in the future. In this video, we're going to take a look at it all. Graphics cards past, present, and future. So buckle up and let's get into it. Today, GPUs are at the heart of PC gaming and the very cutting edge of video game graphics. But this is a modern development. You see, before the advent of 3D gaming in the 1990s, games were pieces of 2D software and the hardware required to best run them was very different than it is today. In fact, PCs were not at the cutting edge of video game power for much of games early history. Arcade machines often had the bespoke hardware and the development budget required to really push early video games forward and demonstrate what was possible with more modern computing technology. Before GPUs in the 1980s and earlier, there were graphics chips like the custom chip in the Commodore Amiga released in 1985. Chips like these were built to display 2D graphics. And by the late 1980s, chips like the IBM 8514 brought true 2D hardware acceleration to the home computer market. By the early 1990s, the idea, at least, of the GPU was out there in the world. But it wasn't until the mid-1990s that the term GPU was even popularized, some attributing this to Sony in reference to the GPU in the original PlayStation. The GPU as we know it refers to a piece of hardware with a variety of hardware-accelerated 3D rendering features. This style of card was popularized by the upstart company NVIDIA with the launch of their first GPU line, GeForce, all the way back in 1999. It was the single largest chip ever built. It was bigger than a CPU, and people were shocked. In a sense, the term GPU doesn't even mean all that much. The idea of a GPU is like the term Blu-ray in relation to HD DVD. They are different things, but what they do is remarkably similar. Because ultimately, the name doesn't come from something technical, but rather a marketing department. This is why NVIDIA's big rival in the 2000s, ATI, coined the term VPU, or Visual Processing Unit, with its GPU lines in the early 2000s. Not to impress upon consumers the idea that a VPU was a different piece of technology altogether, but that it was instead a GPU distinct from NVIDIA's offerings. Regardless of what we call them, GPUs throughout the first decade of the 21st century were dominated by two things. The rivalry between NVIDIA and ATI, and a year-after-year -year distinct and dedicated improvement to resolution and frame rate. In the year 2000, Sony's PlayStation 2 released just before the year's end. The PS2 brought SD, or standard definition, to the masses, which was a resolution around 480p. By 2010, PCs could easily handle 1080i and even 1080p, which was the full fat full HD, at frame rates well above 60fps, which is an enormously far cry from the consoles of the time, the PS3 and the Xbox 360 which largely ran at 720p and struggled to regularly even maintain 30fps. In the space of around 10 years, the computing market went from the introduction of 3D video cards to these computing beasts capable of rendering complicated 3D scenes and simulations at previously unimaginable fidelities and frame rates. The rise of the GPU was meteoric, if it was anything, and by 2010, it had already become, for gamers, hard to imagine a world where GPUs weren't at the throbbing center of video game development be it in a console or in a PC. The next 10 years of GPU history, the 2010s up through right now, are very different from the previous decade. The previous decade was characterized by consistent, enormous increases in power, which led directly to increases in frame rate and resolution. This helped define the video game generations of the last two decades. Each new console able to run games at better frame rates and higher resolutions than the previous device. The PS2 wasn't HD, but the PS3 was, the PS4 was Full HD and ran games far better at that. This was all enabled by the developments in GPU technology that led to the GPUs in each PlayStation console. The 2010s, though, brought with them GPU advancements that did not fundamentally change resolution and frame rate in the ways it did in the past, 
For most of the 2010s, people continued to game at 1080p. Because not only were higher resolutions expensive, but the hardware out there just couldn't really do them justice. However, resolutions and frame rates today are already far higher than they have ever been in history. So even the idea of increasing resolution by a mere 50%, the jump from 1080p to 4K being approximately 400%, from, say, the PS5 to the PS6 is a staggering ask in terms of computing power. While today, cards like Nvidia's high-end RTX 3090, which retails for a staggering $1,500 if you can find one, advertise themselves as being the world's first 8K GPU. This is game changing. There's no other way to put it. My mind is blown. The path to 8K is going to be much rockier than anybody imagines. It's going to take years and years for hardware and software designed to push games in 4K to not just 60 FPS across the board, but 144 FPS and higher. The amount of computing power required to render games in general in 8K at 60 FPS, for example, is not going to be within reach of GPUs in the near future. The 2010s saw GPUs push games from 1080p all the way up to 4K, and high refresh rates blossomed at all resolutions. But even this massive change to graphics technology is nothing like the exponential gains of the previous decade. The modern GPU market has gone in a different direction than GPU development of yore. In part because driving resolutions like 8K simply isn't feasible, and nor is it possible to render games at high refresh rates in 4K, yes, but also to make progress with graphical technology in a different arena, ray tracing. Ray tracing is the biggest change to the modern GPU in years. And this is particularly exceptional because this hallmark feature does not enable games to run faster or at higher resolution. In fact, ray tracing comes at what is very often a hefty, sizable cut to performance. However, the next big step in game rendering is the advancement of perfection of lighting. The difference between a photograph and a photorealistic rendered scene is more often than not found in the lighting. Ray tracing is the ultimate answer to lighting games in the most natural, fully featured, and robust way possible. A full ray tracing implementation, even in a game like Minecraft, can radically reshape and redefine the tone of the entire experience. Ray tracing itself isn't the end to what NVIDIA calls RTX features in their GPUs, though, because those same cores are also what powers DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling. This technology, another bespoke GPU feature, makes use of deep learning to upscale games to higher resolution, while only actually rendering them at a fraction of the desired resolution. This means that in conjunction with a performance-heavy feature like ray tracing, DLSS, can massively increase performance with little to no visual downgrade. Where will the future take GPUs? Well, if 2000 to 2010 brought with it many changes to game frame rates and resolutions, and 2010 to 2020 brought with it substantial changes, yes, but far fewer ones, then it's safe to say we can expect the next 10 years to bring even fewer of these traditional upgrades. Don't expect your 2025 GPU to be playing games at 16K, even at 30 FPS. Even the next-gen consoles, with their beefy GPUs set to last gamers for 5 to 10 years, are not able to run games even at 4K 60 FPS across the board. But none of this is to say that GPU development is going to be at a standstill. Quite to the contrary. Features like ray tracing are going to mature and become much better and more performant. And other technologies like that of DLSS are also going to come to games to help cut down on heavy hardware requirements to render games at exceptionally high resolutions and frame rates. In the next 5 or 10 years, games may not run at frame rates so high you couldn't imagine them before, or even in higher resolutions that you find them today, but they will look better than ever before, simply in a different way. Over time, the obsession with resolution itself will likely wane, as gamers realize that changes to the ways games run and are rendered can lead to improvements far beyond what simple increases to resolutions or frame rates can provide. It's also important to remember that advancements in GPU technology trickle down. They don't come all at once. Even when a technology comes to market, it often takes years or even decades for it to become cost-effective to introduce it to the mainstream. What's your take on the GPU world? Are you blown away by how far we've come, or are you more staggered by all that's left to achieve? Let us know in the comments down below. And hey, you, if you liked this video and thought it was halfway decent, why not subscribe to us over here at The Gamer? And ring the notification bell to stay up to date with all of our latest videos.